What's going on guys? On today's video, we're gonna be installing a lithium battery in this Candy Cruiser 4P golf cart here. This thing right here has the old sealed AGM batteries in it right now. I just drove it from my buddy's house, 17 miles per hour. The batteries are just failing fast. It's time to get this right here on some lithium. Let's get started. All right, we've got us another battery to install today. This one is by Noviac. N-O-V-A-I-C, noviacpower.com. On the top, it says maintenance-free, eight-year warranty, eco-friendly. We have these tiny bolt heads here. And each bolt head looks like they have a marker on here as well. Uh, I guess they, when they were assembling it, they put those on there. On the sides right here, we have our feet welded onto the case. We have a vent here, your charger, your screen, and your switch. And you got some clear covers for your negative and your positive. There's going to be nothing on the back of the battery. And nothing on this side of the battery here. Now, you know I like to open them up. I didn't even ask them if I could open it up. But we're just going to go ahead and open it up and see exactly what's inside of this one right here before we start getting it installed into our candy. So all of these screws here, it took a seven millimeter socket to remove them and they actually have Loctite on there. It's the first battery I've seen with Loctite. I got it in my hands. I was wondering why it was all sticky. So that's what it is. We got all the bolts removed here. Let's go ahead and remove the top and see exactly what's inside of this battery here. And well, it looks like a battery we've previously had here on the channel with these covers here, but down here looks a little bit different. We have a 300 amp um, fuse there. Looks like some relays. It's got your built-in shunt down there. And that looks pretty good. Looks like another relay there as well. Everything's nice and neat. Um, looks like the BMS is down there with those uh, wires going into the side there. Let me put the here let's pull these covers can we nope these covers have these plastic clips on there i'm sure we could pull them off but i don't want to break anything so we're going to leave that on there but everything looks to be good eight cells eight cells we're in a series for 16 and this looks pretty good and let's get the cover back on it and we're going to start going ahead and removing some batteries from outside the candy now looking at the candy here, our main positive and negative is on the driver's side. So we're gonna put the top logo back here just like this. So we'll have our main positive and negative over here. So when you lift the seat up, you'll see the battery. I think that just looks better. Now this battery here came with its own charger. We have our main positive and negative leads. We have our main 110 input. We have like this little gauge here. I doubt I'm gonna put it on there. And this is just for like a charging gauge. This right here is the adapter to connect the charger to the battery. And this right here is actually gonna go to the battery itself and um, communicate with the battery. All right, it's the first time I've worked on one of these candy carts, but I'm gonna take a 13 millimeter deep socket to remove these nuts here. We might utilize one of these bars here as well, depending on the battery fitment. Once we get it in, I think we'll use one of those to hold it down. I think that'll be pretty nice there. So those brackets right here, they were actually stuck to the top of the batteries here with, this is like uh, some type of uh, bluing strip or whatever there. So um, once you go to get them free, if you have a candy, you haven't removed the batteries, just note, um, it's gonna feel like you're gonna have to pick all the batteries up at once, you don't have to. I just stuck a crow's foot tool underneath one bracket and popped it open, and or I popped it up, and once I popped it up, the um, brackets came off. Now I wanna say the best way to probably get these batteries out, I started with the middle battery in the back. After I loosened this right here panel back here up, I was had enough room to then get that middle battery out. Then the two side batteries, I had plenty of room to get those out. Now on these front batteries here, I just got the driver side one out. On the passenger side, I'm gonna try to do the same thing, which we're gonna lift up the back of the battery first, 
to get it over this right here um, battery bracket and then we should pop it out. So I'm gonna see if I can do this one-handed. I'm just putting my fingers back here. Just like that. Now we can pull the battery out. Now the first problem that we're running into, I wouldn't even call it a problem. We're just gonna need a solution, okay? The width of the battery tray. Number one, just like on the easy goes, we need to come down here and zip these right here, top brackets off. And we might have to do something with these right here brackets as well, depending on the width. Another thing that I've noticed on these candies, this right here is the ground cable. This right here is the power cable. So we're gonna need to replace the power cable from the controller with a little bit longer cable. Now I went ahead and got these battery dividers cut down flush with the top of the battery tray. I'm gonna just shoot some black paint on there just to protect it. I'm gonna go ahead and get the battery in here. I'm gonna try to slide it back as far as I can. Now let's talk about the Candy's charging system. This cover is the main 110 volt female port. The Candy has a unique accessory plug that plugs into the wall and plugs into here. So actually, if we could use this, I say we use it, right? Anyways, this runs down and underneath the cart to behind the driver's side uh, front left tire here. This is a connector, that's your power connector that runs into the charger. And that gray box right there, it's kind of hard to see, that's the charger. And so it's right there behind the front middle portion of the grill. So that's where the charger's at, right there. But you remember our charger has a 110 volt plug and this one right here doesn't. So we're gonna have to modify this one a little bit in order to keep the stock charging plug and receptacle. All right, this is the stock charger. I went ahead and got it pulled off. This is your input right here on this far right, your output here. You got some more uh, little small cables here. I'm gonna just go ahead and wrap all these cables up. I'll probably end up uh, keeping this right here just in case we get another candy that needs a charger or something, we'll have something. And I'm also gonna go ahead and put these right here bolts back through the charger mounting plate there as well. All right, so let's talk about the stock charging port right here. It's coming down, got it coming in here. I'm gonna go ahead and probably chop this right here off right around here. This will give us enough room that we can uh, splice these wires back, add a female 110 accessory on here. Then we can plug this right here directly into the aftermarket charger of the new battery. So this right here cable was going to the factory charger and I went ahead and cut the end off Put this right here end on it and we can plug our charger into it all right got the charger mounted down i used some self tappers next to wheel well back there in the front i used a bolt not sure if you can see at the top left of the charger there i cut a little l uh, out of it because it has a hose running into the reservoir there i didn't want to hit it and it allowed me to push it a little bit further so i got that mounted and i think that looks pretty good so it looks like it will work. We're able to get one of these holes lined up, but the other one will not line up just because the battery is just a tad wide. So we're gonna need to go in here and probably just extend these right here ovals out a little bit more. All right, we're getting down to the last nitty gritty here. This right here is from the charger. It just slides into place there. I need to loosen these up, scoot it over a little bit, maybe between these two. So I can put the screen there. This one's going to the switch beside the screen. And I just uh, sent my guy a message. This right here is the screen. I think we're gonna mount it right in here. I think that's gonna be pretty good there. Now there is a screen on the dash, but remember that was lead or AGM. So the batteries is not gonna read exactly right. And that's why we still wanna keep that uh, lithium gauge in here. Remember it also has a shunt, so but this right here worked out flawlessly right here because um, one thing I notice is um, we're using the, the stock hardware hold down. Then we just need to hit the power, the ground from the golf cart and the charger. And there was one thing there from the DC converter they already had in here. And then it's just connecting the 110 running the wire to the gauge and we're pretty much done. 
All right, got the cart all put together. Battery's in, cart won't move. Why won't it move? Well, there is a charger interlock that you need to bypass on the charger. So what does that do? Well, this right here cart with the stock charger, it had a safety switch. So when it was charging, it wouldn't allow the golf cart to run. Just like the easy goes and the club cars, right? So on this one here, uh, above the charger, there's gonna be a two pin and a three pin connector. We're gonna go with a two pin, it's a blue and white wire, and we're gonna join those two wires together. All right, so that's exactly what mine looks like there. I just went ahead and cut the plug off, stripped the wires back, tied them together, put a butt connector on there with heat shrink, and heat shrink it up. I heat shrink the outside piece there to the point so nothing could get in it as well. So we're good, and uh, now the cart will run properly. All right, straight away. Got a full road ahead of us. We're sitting at zero. Let's see how fast this thing will go now. All right, we're still topping out at 25 miles per hour. We just topped out around 25, I believe, and that's about the stock speed on this one right here. This controller is set to 25, so with that being said, we're good now. This cart was only going like 16 miles per hour, 17 max, and it was dropping battery fast, so this thing feels a lot happier than when I first rode it a couple of years ago with him, but here we go. Well, there it goes, guys. That was a pretty simple install there. This right here is the Candy Cruiser 4P. I've never worked on one of these before. I'm glad we were able to use the stock receptacle here for the charger. So he can just plug that in to his uh, standard way of doing it, just like he did. We didn't change anything there. there was no sense in doing that if, you know, it's already there floorboard if you've never seen the candy cruiser we mounted the gauge right in here as well we're at 97 percent we just took it down the road and here it is so this thing right here is pretty much stock other than the stereo he has on here which is just a bluetooth speaker they installed a speaker up underneath the front here a speaker right there and not sure if we can get to it so I can show you, but there's also a subwoofer on here as well. And it's kind of in the back, back there. You can see it right there, so. But this right here is the Candy Cruiser. It's not a bad cart. I think the main problem with these are the batteries. They put the AGMs in there and they kind of fail kind of quickly. Got the 23s, 14s. This is stock. You know, you got front brakes on here, disc brakes, coilover, kind of like a McPherson strut on the front. The light bar on there is extremely bright, which that's a stock light bar. And not sure if you guys know this or not, but I actually have one of these and it's missing a lot of parts on it. Pretty much the whole roof is missing. The seat bottoms are missing. I think the back there's missing on mine and one of the trailering arms down there is missing on mine as well. We might do something with it on the channel or we might just gut it and use the uh, rear end and controller and stuff like that for something else. Not exactly sure, but there it is. And I appreciate you guys watching today's video. If you have any questions, Drop them down in the comments. And until next time, we'll see y'all later.